Hello and welcome to Spread Eagle's presentation of the October Pro Series Games of the Month from Exeter, New Hampshire. What you're looking at there are the standings after the first matches. Team Daly and Team McGinty at the top of the heap there. Our first match features the McGinty team. Uh, it was headed by Maddie Kelly with her 127 average performance during uh, six strings in the September competition. Season will last nine months, featuring 18 matches. Each match is worth eight points, with two points going to the winner of each game and another two given to the winner of the total after three. We had some audio difficulties on Sunday just for the first few boxes. I'm going to show you some video highlights and get you right back to the action. Our first pairing featured Andy Bailey from Team Merrill and Alicia Cowley for Team McGinty. Bailey was unable to complete her spare. This was her first box, but she's now working on a 10. That was good, and she went on to post a 42. Our second pair featured Aaron Sincere for Team McGinty. There, making a spare in the third. He went up against Sarah Duffy. Duffy had been open through the first four boxes, and then she posted this one. So she'll sit down with 46 and two balls coming up. Sincere followed her right to the seats by making his second spare. He had 56. The score was 107.46 after two. And that brought up Maddie Kelly for Team McG McGinty. That was her spare in the third. She was up against Russ Neely Jr who was open in the third. But this is right around when our microphones were reconnected. And I'm gonna bring you right back to the action from Sunday. We just lost audio connections and we're now back. We'll have to restore that on the finished product. Bob Lee here in the top of the first string. Team McGinty on lane six. Maddie Kelly bowling for them in the bonus. Shaking pins. Look like they're going to settle down for a six. After her first mark, she spared in the fourth. She's at 46 after three straight tens. And what a angle in one pick up there. And Neely, again, finds his mark with his second ball, but unless that one falls late, it does. That will be a spare for Neely. The seven succumbs. So he'll sit down with 46 in a ball. He and Sarah Duffy both have in a ball for Team Merrill. 56 in a ball for two pairs in a row. As Ed Mark Lanes is off head pin but leaves the eagle wing fronted by the head pin. Strike on the first ball from Pelletier. He, the six was the last to fall. And a spare from Woodside. Strike on spare hatch. 20 in the first box for him. He's got two bonus balls coming up. And a double! It's a double for Pelletier. First balls in the third streak. Both bowlers. Marks to begin. Pelletier working on a double. Four on the first. That pin, that's gonna take five, so a 25 in the first. Nine in the fifth. And seven in the second fill, so 42 through two for Pelletier. He'll be open in the third. 
as was Woodside. Pair of nines in the third, 51 to 48. Norm Pelletier takes, takes back three. Lead is 24 pins. Both teams with balls coming up here. Duffy was working on a strike. Team Merrill. Pelletier misses that head bit. First miss on his official offering. Woodside just a little full on the three pin there. Both bowlers open in the fourth. Woodside at 57, Pelletier at 59. Lead is 22 pins for Woodside and Team McGinty, who had finished 14 and two last week. Woodside. Oh! Using the wood. He is unable to carry the nine pin on that one. Good bid from Pelletier, but he's going to be open in the fifth. That was a 10 for Eddie Woodside and a 67 half. Matching 67s for Woodside and Pelletier. Brings the lead back to 24 pins to Team McGinty. And here are the anchor bowlers. Mike McGinty on the right. Chris Merrill on the left. First ball from McGinty. Off that pin. Drops eight. That's the one seven. A nine drop to the five for Merrill. Ganty in and takes the spare. And Merrill is right on his object. Naked pins like that fall 71% of the time for pro bowlers who carry an average of 123. Mike McGinty with his first offering and the bonus. Nine drop to the seven. And Merrill's in the pocket. Gets a split. Both bowlers open in the second. McGinty just left, as was Merrill. He picks up one more. He had nine on his bill. Lead is now is unofficially. Drop. And a nice pocket shot with a, it's like the six. Eight, nine, some wood to think about. McGinty just off. Is it left? Comes back. Wood won't carry the eight pin. Merrill takes one back there. He's at. Just had a score change on the uh, on, on Alicia Callie. She's been given a 102. That is her average and a nine drop for McGinty. Four pin stands. Wood looks like it's right behind it, maybe off it. He's gonna go for the pin. He's got it. Two marks for McGinty and the wee big wing falls. That's a 60 percenter for Chris Merrill. His first mark. 
both goal and the bonus. This will be the first ball in the fifth box. Head pin to eight. Off the head pin, but a good mix. He gets seven. That's the that's the one, two, and eight. Third spare for McGinty. And Merrill's just left of his object. So he'll sit down with a ball. Pelletier also had a 67. Sarah Duffy with 46 in a ball. Chris Merrills was a 55. Those are the scores. We have a 30 pin lead right now. There's um, bonus balls coming up for five of the bowlers. As we return for the, Andy Bailey's gonna throw first. Now drop to the five. Bailey started the first half with a 42. Crosses over just a little too much. She'll be open in the sixth. Seventh from Bailey is just left. She gets three. Alicia Callie's score will go down as a 102 today. Each time she bowls, she bowls, she is absent. Which is why Andy is bowling alone. Third ball coming up. She's got the one seven. Nine and seven, she's at 60 through seven. Great opportunity coming up next. Bailey looking at the four and seven. With Wood, takes the right hand and it goes first mark. Here in the eighth, she'll have a bonus ball to start the ninth. Seven in the bonus. So she's at 77 now through, through eight. Just a little wide on her spare offering in the ninth. She'll be open. Bailey carries a 95 average, gets 10 there. She's at 88, I'm sorry, 87. Through nine, through nine, this will be your last box in the first string. 
Nice head pin, a little thin. Looks like the three, the five, the seven, and the ten. With wood to help. Second ball in the tenth coming. Bailey sweeps. Just gets the five. So she's at 94. This will be her last offering. And that's what she'll start with. 94 for Andy Bailey. Sarah Duffy and Aaron St. Cyr coming up next. Duffy hits the head pin, but she's rewarded with the uh, four, five, seven. So she'll be open. St. Cyr missed the head pin. He had, he had uh, five head pins to start things off. But he misses the head pin. Third ball. He'll take a seven. St. Cyr was in the bonus. Three for uh, to finish finish the first half at 55. He's at 52 in, in a ball, so first ball in the seventh box here. Duffy's off to the right. Takes three. Mirror image for Saint Cyr. Who, was, who had been working on a spare for the first half with a 55, so she managed to even things up in the first half. Both bowlers with nines in the seventh box. Welcome if you just joined us. Bob Lee here from uh, match three of the Sunday Pro League at Exeter, New Hampshire. Exeter lanes. Duffy crosses over and drops nine to the five pin. Threw that one from well on the right side. Got a good angle there. We have five other matches going on. The featured match today is between there's the spare. For second of the match, Duffy's now at 83 in a ball through eight. Good bid from St. Cyr. Aaron finished the first half, both bowlers finished the first half with a 55. Aaron had two spares. He's got a seven, eight, and a nine on the, so far on the back. And he, he's now at 79. Fills of it of six and three for St. Cyr on his two spares. Big fill, but a five drop off the pocket. Duffy. St. Cyr's back in the pocket with the diamond. Diamond 40%er for professional bowlers. Kelly is open in the night. Take an eight. 96 for nine. 
St. Cyr as well with eight. He's at 87. Lead with Stunkins coming into the second half. Team. Team McGinty has an extra ball as Duffy punches out the two eight. St. Cyr finds the pocket and after a scary flight, he's got a makeable spare. Duffy has a big out ball coming up. Remember, she's at 96. St. Cyr will need a mark to catch her. And he got it. That was his third mark. Oh, tough punch on that one. That'll be a five, so a 101 for Duffy, who is a 113 average so far in Pro, pro Series. St. Cyr, who's carrying a 120 average, has another, has another wrap. He's at 97. Off head pin. Gets a nice wash up in. Seven more, so that'll be a 104. Show you those scores briefly. As Russ Neely and Maddie Kelly step up. Kelly on your left for Team McGinty. She was on a spare set. So Neely also on the on the spare picked up three, so uh, one more picked up there by Team McGinty. Tough fills there. Nine for Neely. Third ball for Kelly. She'll take eight. Kelly, Kelly's at 68. She finished the first half with a 60. Nice makeable pair for Russ. The wood should help. A lot of ways to take this one. He takes the wood and gets a deflection. Double wood didn't work for him there. Oh, Kelly got her wing and just missed. The seven pin in the corner. Picks up one with that 10. Seven now through seven. Both bowlers off the head pin to start. Yeah. Big out coming up. Neely facing five. Kelly will be open. Yeah. She hit her object, but that's a tough five. 72 through eight. Neely drops to 800 with one spare. Kelly, who finished with spares in the fourth and the fifth, had big fills, a uh, big fill early anyway, and began the match with 310, so she's got the lead by 15 pins. Eight drop to the baby split. And Neely will be open in the ninth. Kelly now working on the spare. There it is, her third of the first string. Wood is too deep for Neely. 
Tenth box coming up, Kelly in the bonus. We're going to build on a six pin this pairing. Match score overall is 30. Nine drop, ten. Oh, spare as the four is the last to fall. Neely with a needed strike in the tent. Oh, what a pickup on the horses. Her fourth spare here in the first. Kelly. At 104, Neely's on the head pin. He's got another ball coming up. Off his strike. Seven in the spare. For Kelly, she's got a 120. That'll be a 99 for Neely. One twenty. Like one twenty to me. Yeah. <laughs> Pelletier and Woodside coming up next. Briefly show you the lead and cut right back as Norm Pelletier, who began with a double, starts his sixth with four. He had a 67. Both bowlers had a 67 now. Woodside drops eight with a very makeable six and ten. Pelletier still has the head pin. Spare number two to go with a strike. Rock. The Woodside. Pelletier in the Exeter Bowling jersey. Has 76 through six. He's 16 over. Head pin to a three and one. To the five for Woodside. Eight in the bonus. He's at 85. Already 25 over. And he's wide left him miss on the bit on his bit the fourth mark. Pelletier with a beautiful three and one pickup. Pelletier trailing in this pairing by, by nine. Oh, tough. Half twister. Another head pin and a nine drop. Four rock. Looked like he was full, but it, it was working ball. Eight more. Or seven more for Pelletier. And look at that. Four marks. Four, three spares and a strike. For Woodside, he's at 105 and a ball through seven. Pelletier's at 95. So a 10 pin lead here. Side grants him six more. He's got a he's got the end. The five, six, nine, and ten. Pelletier with a makeable the three. He's got the uh, triple here, the eagle wing fronted by the one. He's got the one and the two, and no love on the four. Almost said he had it. Ball looked, looked very good. So that's a 10. He's at 105 through 9. He's 15 over. Woodside at 119. 29 over. A 
129 more with a 10. And the rest of the game would get a would get a 129. Pelletier crosses, leaves the diamond. Four on the left for Woodside. Eddie's average is 117. Pelletier is 116 in the early going here. The norm is open, as is Woodside. A 10. A 115 for Pelletier. And a 126 for Woodside. Chris Merrill drops eight. The head pin. Wood here. Merrill, the anchor, had one spare in the, in the first half. He gets his second here in the sixth. McGinty will be open as he takes down the one and the three. Looking at the seven, eight, four and eight. McGinty who had a 72 half. He was in the he was in the bonus. Eight in the fill for Merrill. He has some, he has the six, seven, and this wood might go, but it's a little deep. It just pointed, pointed back to the curtain. Five and the six with the 10. It'll be open. Merrill with a nice cross alley shot. The seven, 83 now. Two seven, he's 13 over. McGinty at 88. Two pinner for McGinty. Merrill with a better split off of the hit pin. He'll be open. Object twice. McGinty will be open as well, though. Ten in the eighth for Merrill. Winner of the Eastern Classic. He now starts his sixth. Left of the head pin. With a somewhat makeable. He's got the one three seven. Ginty, another little baby split there. Oh, what a pickup. He, the ball took out the seven. Took the one three on the inside of that opening. McGinty uses the wood and gets it to gets it to cross in front of the four and seven. He will be open in the ninth. Merrill closing ground quickly. Strike! Strike! On spare, and that'll turn things around. Seven drop to the triangle. He's got the six, nine, and ten. Merrill at 113 plus two balls. Oh! Triangle won't fall. McGinty right on his mark, but can't get the six to carry the ten. So he'll have a 116. 
First ball from Merrill's off head pin. He's got two offerings coming up. Still in the bonus. He'll take a seven for a 130. Unofficially 130 it is. Puts the lead to 568 to 539 for Team McGinty. I'm going to show you our uh, unofficial scores right here. We'll, we'll ask if we can get a confirmation. Can you check my scores for see if they're official? I, I have a 568 to 539. That's the unofficial lead right now. A nod and Chris Merrill's checking over his scores. We very often get changes <laughs> at this stage. Okay, that's been confirmed. That is a 29 pin lead then for Team McGinty as we start the second and two points as they move their record up to 16 and 2 in the early going. Second place. You see how Team Daly is doing. They were 15 and 1 coming into the second week action. We'll move back to uh, Andy Bailey bowling now on lane six. Alicia Kelly, who's absent. Great looking opportunity here for Bailey. She's got a barn door spare offering here. But she's in the. That'll be a foul. So she'll still get a third ball. And have a shot at the nine. That'll be an eight. For Bailey. The two pinner now. See that piece of wood hanging out in front? It's going to have to, yeah. You can see from the uh, pin cam, it looked like it was a little bit in front of the five pin. Touches it, but can't get it to move. So another, a nine and an eight to start for Bailey. Callie will be taking a pair of 51s for a 102. According to league rules for absent bowlers. Bailey crosses over with another pocket shot. This one, again, remarkably similar to last. It's the five. Five and nine. Wood is also blocking that one. It's re really been a shame. Last two balls she's thrown have been right in the pocket. Three head pins in a row for Bailey. She'll be open. Now standing at 24. Back in the pocket again, and this time she gets a variant of the spread eagle. This one is a clipped eagle with a talon, as I'd call it. Side saddle triangle on the left, consisting of the one, two, and eight. And the eagle wing on the right. Oh, tough. Into the hole. Big out ball now coming. Bailey at 24 through three. Oh, that was a good one. Picked up four for an eight. 32 now. 
Bailey, who shot a 95 in the first half, looks at her first ball in the fifth here on lane six. Misses the head pin, but has a, has a decent look here with the horses. Sean Baker poses after his strike on lane three to our left. Here's Bailey's spare offering. She crosses over. Finds the, finds the eye of the wood. That'll be an eight and a 40 half for Bailey. So as Sarah Duffy and Aaron St. Cyr take their place in position two, remind you we're in the second string. Bob Lee here for Spread Eagle Productions and we're at Exeter Lanes in New Hampshire. October 24th, Duffy starts with a half Worcester on the three pin. at a 101 in the first. Aaron St. Cyr who had a 104. Had a 120 average coming in um, through his first six strings in the Pro Series. For her part, had a 113. Both bowlers open to start things here in the second. Duffy with a nine, St. Cyr coming up with his third ball. Both bowlers with a nine. Eleven pin lead in the early going as we give Alicia Kelly a 102 score. In her absence. She picked up 11 pins over Bailey for the first half. Nice nine drop. St. Cyr is flush on the head pin. It has a spread eagle variant. She's gonna have to call it. She wipes that one off. She wipes that one off. That'll be a nine. Just over the line, across the plane of the gutter. Wasn't clear whether it hit the gutter, but it's whether it crosses the plane, right, Russ? Yeah. Both bowlers at 18 now through the second box. Second ball is coming up. Duffy was off on the sixth pin a moment ago. She'll be open in the third. Showing her frustration there. Oh! St. Cyr. Oh, there it is. Good 10 from Duffy. St. Cyr was. Foiled twice on the eight pin. First. By his two pinner. It bounced off the wall and in front of it, and then later by the wood. Seven for Duffy off on the two pin. She's looking at the one, three, seven. Sincere now. That's right. Four horsemen go 40% of the time for a professional sport with a 123 average. As I said earlier, St. Cyr has a 120 average. Right in his wheelhouse. You gotta figure they're hitting their head pin like that 70% of the time. 
That means that uh, the majority of those will fall, but not all of them. As, as every bowler knows, this. You got to count on some action from the wall or a sweep. Saints here with a 10. Both bowlers open through four. Duffy with a 38 to 37 lead. She has two 10s in a row. First ball on the fifth coming up next. We are in the second string. Friday Pro League. Duffy off to the right. Leaves it four, one and one. Ricky leave for St. Cyr. He's got the four, five, seven. Oh, oh Duffy! Cleared out everything but the four. Gonna need action. Looked like he was trying to pick the wood. Carry the five pin. St. Cyr and Duffy with tens. Duffy picks up one there. Lead is now 10 pins. She had a 47 with no marks. Beautiful pinning job there. St. Cyr with a 48, even better. Russ Neely with a three pin. Maddie Kelly crosses over and drops nine to the four. They have big out coming up. Lead in the early going is 99-87 for Team McGinty. They, remember they picked up 11 with the dummy. A moment ago, St. Cyr picked up one more. Over Duffy. Kelly's lo looking at that one close. You can see on the pin cam there is space between the pins. She's not sure. Let's see how she plays it. Oh, beautiful cover. She went right, right at the ribbon. Carried the pit, carried that uh, wood straight back. Made her mark in the first. A nine for Neely. Looking to add to that 11 pin lead, or 12 pin lead early on. Neely with a five and seven. 48% of all head pin shots result in a split. Open in the second. Good job on the five pin. He gave it a chance. He needed a perfect, perfect deflection for the ball to carry. Three objects in a row for Neely, but he gets a 10. <laughs> Kelly at 29 through two. Four through two. That, I was reading that wrong. She had been. She had a spare and had a six fill. Beautiful spare pickup for Neely. And Kelly is just a whisker off the head on her four horsemen. Bit. Bowlers with the skill will try to hit that one thin in the pocket. So the ball will carry through to the corner. Kelly, Neely in the, in the bonus, grabs three. So he's at 32, 33, 32 lead for Kelly. She had six in her bonus, but uh, gave away a couple with an eight. In the second. Neely is open. Kelly's second now. Great bid on the... 
seven pins, but she's open. Both bowlers with a nine in the fourth. 42 for Kelly, 41 for Neely. Nine drop, eight drop, sorry, to the six and nine. Prematurely called down. Spread eagle for Kelly, who's right down the middle. Just right, Neely. Very high percentage in this match. Misses his object. And he'll settle for a 49. And that was a 50 for Kelly. So a 149 to 130. Show you that score at the half. 29 pin lead for Team McGinty in game one. Fourth bowlers now. Norm Pelletier, your right, against Ed Woodside. Pelletier, a 116 bowler for Team Merrill. Gonna go, it's gone! A late drop on the spare. The head pin is the last of all. The Pelletier. Good pin action off of the rolls here at Exeter. So Pelletier grabs. Two pins uh, with that uh, spare so far, and he is in the bonus. Chasing 12. Oh no, that was the one five. And a nine drop for Woodside. 117 bowler at a Central Park. Well, it's here with a big out ball coming up and Woodside uses the wood. Adjacent. A six for Pelletier. That was a tough fill. He ended up with a two fill on head pin. And then with the six, he's at 18 through two. Woodside also at 18, but he's got a bonus ball coming up. And a 14 pin lead. lead for Pelletier. Eight in the bonus for Woodside. And that lead moves up to 22. In the second game. 51 overall and that's two in a row for, for the Rock. Oh. Norm. First ball, the fourth box coming up here in the second string. McGinty team won the first, and there's a strike. The nine was the last to fall. Woodside in the bonus grabs another seven. He's at 43 through third, three. But he misses the two pin there. And he takes nine. That's a 52 in the fourth. 12 over for Woodside. Felt here. Working on a, on a strike. Remember, he started with a double at the first. Very accurate ball. Woods 
side. Glad he was open at that moment. It's a half Worcester. Pelletier still in the bonus. What a great cross, and he's got He's got it! Three marks on the first half. He'll sit down with 57 and a ball. Woodside. He takes a nine. It was a big third ball for Woodside. As big as any spare fill for him as he grabs seven more. And that will be a 61 for him. We'll briefly show you that as Chris Merrill brings his first ball, the first, or the second, sorry. On the head, oh my, 189 for McGinty. Para. Unfortunate head pins there. What a what a shot from Merrill. He used the wood on the right and hit the pocket as well. And somehow managed to clear. I didn't even can't even remember all the pins that were standing after that first ball. Two great shots from Merrill though. He picks up four as McGinty is open. And a six. So Merrill, gets two on the fill, and McGinty drops nine through the bunny hole. That's going to be a big third ball coming up for the spare. McGinty is good. Oh, just a little thin. He gets three more, but that's a five. Tough five for Merrill. 17 through two. McGinty at 16, but he's got the bonus ball coming up. And there's a strike. The eight was the last to fall. And matching twos on the bills for the first two spares. Merrill's gonna do what to do better on his strike. Just a moment. And look at that, McGinty finds himself looking at eight with his third ball here on lane five. Plays it safely, is able to grab another five pins, a seven. That's a 25. Merrill at 27, but he's in the double bonus here. Another, that's the third. Half Worcester in a row in the bonus. Merrill, of course, has another shot at it. McGinty, look at the late fall, and oh, the, the whole box fell and tri tripped up on a late piece of wood. So Merrill takes a six in his fill and an eight on that box. He's at 41 through four. McGinty now will be working on the strike. He looked like he was going to be facing the four horsemen. Merrill will be open in the fifth. And McGinty matches the sixth. So both bowlers had a spare and a strike. And both bowlers got a two and a four on their fills. It was a tough, some great bowling and some tough fills for both of them. 47 half for McGinty. He gives, he gives away four pins for Merrill. We had a 51. We'll, as the bowlers change side, we'll give you a uh, look at that. So a 257, a 243 half. 
Team McGinty won the first string by 29. And they now lead by 14 in the second. But remember, uh, Norm Pelletier has a ball, so that, that 14 will be coming back down again. Andy Bailey was bowling alone against uh, Alicia Cowley's absent score. She'll get a, she'll take another 51. We'll put that 102 down. Off the head pin, but she has a two pinner. One and three for Bailey, the 95 average through her first three. She had a 94 in the first string. And just off the head pin, Bailey will be open in the sixth. Good 10 there. She's now at 50 through six. Started a match with an eight, nine, seven, and then a pair of eights. That's her first 10. Bailey crosses too far out, off into the four pin. Head pin there. On her second shot, she'll be open. Seventh. Good out for a nine. She's now at 59. 11 under through seven. Callie, by virtue of her absence, finishes at two over. Ball, but uh, the lane is taking taking her her uh, her spin. And her ball's moving hard from right to left. So I just sweep past the head pin, and that one didn't turn quite enough. Bailey's third offering coming up. That's a 10. <laughs> Team McGinty lead, leads by 14 at the half. And they won the first string. With a score of 568 to 539. They are in a bid for first place. We're looking, looking over there to Richie Merrick. How did Daly do in the first? Yeah, they were in first place. They're a half game. We're going to check on that Team Daly score as Dean Sullivan drops a strike on lane four right to our left. Oh, great ball, great ball. The unfortunate two and three split. Gets eight on that for 77. This is her first ball in the 10th coming up. Another chance at the one and three. Richie Meyer, our correspondent, is that Team Daly lost game one and we 
which means for the moment, Team McGinty is in first place. In Sunday Pro League, Bailey will sit down with an 85. That means that there's a 20 pin lead for Team McGinty. As we head into to our second bowlers, Sarah Duffy and Aaron St. Cyr. Everything's scratch here at the Sunday Pro Series. St. Cyr is starting with a 48 half, 47, 47 half, sorry, and Duffy who had a 48. Both were open, but they pinned very well. Good chance here for St. Cyr. On the one and two. He's got the first mark of his second string. Good chance here for Sarah Duffy though. She's got the one, two, and the nine in the back. Needed a flipper on that one, she was just left. like the wood would have carried it. That'll be for a 10. That's four 10s in a row for Duffy. He's at 58 through six. Started with two nines, four 10s. Saints here in the bonus now. Taking a bite. Oh dear, that's a... Another two. The last three spares have been filled with twos. This match. Second ball from Mary. And an excellent bid from Duffy on the four, four horsemen plus two. So that's 68 for St. Cyr. What? 67 for Duffy. Yeah. 19 pin difference in the game so far. Second bowlers here. We're at the what a shot. Nine drop to the seven for Duffy, a good opportunity. St. Cyr is looking at eight. He will be open. Three and two, there it is. Duffy with the, her first mark here in the second. She started the first with a 101. Great job, oh my goodness. I, a three and two split converted for the 10 there. Playing it on the inside. Aaron St. Cyr is now at 78 through eight. Duffy in the bonus. Looking for that. It's gonna be a split. It's gonna be the six and seven. And just one in the bonus for Duffy. Bowlers are tied at 78 through eight. And Aaron loses that one left. Uh-oh. Seven pins. Seven pins and a third ball coming up for Sarah Duffy. Who's been pinning very well up until this box. There she goes. What a what a job. Grabs, grabs her head pin and manages to get a seven out of that. It's an 85. That could have turned really ugly really quickly. 85 through nine. Four pin lead for St. Cyr is 89.
Tough. Two and one. Aaron will be open. Duffy. Oh. Playing with the right wall there. She takes one more back in a pinning battle. That was a 94 half uh, string. Duffy and a 95 for St. Cyr. Show you the scores briefly as Maddie Kelly prepares on lane six. Lead is 20. Team McGinty. The one game one is now in first place officially. As Josh Daly's squad lost their first match. Matt Susie with a highlight uh, 139 in that first game to win over Daly. There you see a 404 391 lead unofficially. That's 13 pins. for Woodside. Pelletier waiting for his wood to settle and actually, look at that! <laughs> the crank of the fist. Thought he, was get, thought he was blessed initially to have that wood laying across the seven pin and instead it knocks it down and the spare, the spare turns into a strike. Oh my goodness, and there is a great answer. A no doubter as Pelletier drops seven on his first bonus ball. Fill for Pelletier. And a nine for his box in the seventh. He's at 94. Eddie Woodside working on the strike. He's at 91. 91 and two balls. Some great bowling here in the fourth matchup. Officially 13 pins, six in the bonus, that'll bring it up to 19 pins for Team McGinty. Peltier chases the head pin on the four and two, but punches it through. Big out ball here coming from Norm. He'll take two more for a seven. One oh one. Ed Woodside with one oh five. Bit full. He's got a he's got a check mark on the right and the seven pin. Pelletier now, Eagle Wing. Eagle Wings are going at sixty percent. The pros. One of the more achievable spares, and there you see it. Pelletier's fifth mark here 
in the second box. He's making a bid to be the high bowler. Eddie Woodside had a 126 earlier. Oh, great action. The split breaks up and Woodside. Okay, that's just three for Norm. And a big spare in the tenth for Woodside. He's at 125. Now he takes he takes the lead from Pelletier. Will be open in the tenth. And that's a 123 at Woodside. Who had a 126 in game one. Has an extra rack. He stands at 122. There's two more. On the crossover. Seven to a 132 unofficially. Yep. That goes down. That is the high score so far. Pelletier with a 123. An 18 pin lead overall. Mike McGinty now in on the head pin. Leaves the hay bale left. Chris Merrill. Both bowlers were open in the fifth. And they will be open in the sixth as well. Merrill had a 51 to 49 lead as McGinty and Merrill start the second half with 10 in the sixth. Lead is lead at the, at the with five to play is 475 to 457. That's an 18 pin lead. things interesting here. So he picks up one there. Drops the lead to sev 17. We'll put that up on the scoreboard. Three to play here. Oh! Strike for McGinty and a nine drop in the bonus. So that lead now drops to eight unofficially. And a spare, a needed spare that time with Merrill. Up against McGinty's strike. Both bowlers in the field now. McGinty with two balls. Just right of the object. Drop six. And that'll be four. So a little two pin pick up there. All right, the lead is unofficially 10 pins. Try to do our math on the fly. Seven pins? Seven pins is the read. That is unofficial. And great head pin rewarded with a four and five. McGinty. He's got sleepers back there. That was a tough one. Four horsemen plus the uh, both bowlers will be open, and that should do it. That was a 107 for McGinty. 
Our first place team stays in first. The score is 5-24. Thank, thank you, Chris. We, and we will return to our bowling action as we start the third string. Andy Bailey drops nine on her first one. Three pieces of wood out in front of the eight pin. She takes the direct route. There was, a, there was a piece of wood there that might have blocked things. That's a big spare. So Team McGinty, who was 14 and two coming in, wins the first two. They are now up to 18 and two. We, we haven't gotten a score from the second game from our fifth, from uh, Team Daly, but we know they lost in game one. Five in the bonus for Bailey. She's at 15. So they won two. How are you doing? The second one's still on? So game two is still on with Team Daly in the second. As Andy Bailey takes a seven for 22 through two. First ball in the third box now. For Bailey. Half blister to start things. Six, seven, eight, facing Bailey. And she'll take a five. That was a tough, tough second ball there. Alicia Kelly's. 102 has been entered in her absence. Bailey, who put together strings of 94 and 85, now has 27 through three. Starting things with a spare here in the third game. That one got away. Big out ball. Seven pins on the left. Third ball coming up. Great job. Good fill on that one. Five of the seven. She's at 35 through four. Extra something on that one. Got some good action off the head pin. One, three, and nine pin remain. Corey Packard picks up a piece of stray wood. Oh, what a good bid. Punches the head pin through. Left with the half whisker right. Her third ball. And looked like she got that one straight. 44 half for Bailey. Another 51 in absentia. Show you those scores briefly. 
amounts to a seven pin lead. Start things off for Team McGinty. Aaron St. Cyr, the second bowler for Team McGinty. He's off on the, on the right. A little baby split. Action doesn't go. Five pin remains. And that'll be a ten. Correct that typo. Pin, but he gets a nine drop nonetheless. St. Cyr is looking at the uh, 10 pin with two pieces of wood just right of it. So he's got to. Yeah. You have to avoid shaving those pieces of wood. So he just left. That'll be a nine. The channel. Big out ball here. Five pins left. And Duffy punches through on the front pin, the three. 1915 after two. Opportunity for St. Cyr. Right. There it is. Nice use of the wood. The ball carried the corner. The wood was not going to carry that whole shot. So. Great 10 for St. Cyr uses the sidewall. He's at 29. Duffy now. 25 and a ball. Oh, there it is. Strike on spare for Sarah Duffy. Enormous gain there. St. Cyr looking for help from his captain. Gintie's going to check on the wood to see if it's in front of the line. It is, so he removes it. The Deadwood line is 24 inches in front of the head pin. Any, any pin in front of that will be removed, if it, even if it's just touching that line. Oh, good bid from St. Cyr. He will be open in the fourth. Takes a, an eight, 38. Sarah Duffy now at 45 and two balls has squared the match up. Team Merrill looking to take its first lead in just a minute. Nine drop from St. Cyr and look at that on the strike. Looking for the double. She's got nine though. Opportunity just right. Since here will be open. Stuffy is also just right, but she takes nine on the strike. 
54. That would be a 48 half. For St. Cyr. And Duffy with a 64. You see the lead is now nine pins for Team Merrill in the early going eh? through two bowlers. Nice job clearing the split there by the wood. Maddie Kelly bowling on your right. Oh, chops oh. the three pin over the six. And that'll be for a 10. Matching tens to start the third string for Neely and Kelly. Off the head pin is six drop. <laughs> Neely is on a three and two split. Almost. That one had the that one had the speed for it, but uh, it's just a little thin. The four horsemen, you can. Oh! Two, Neely converts on the one, two, four, six and ten. First mark here in the third matchup. And seven more. The lead is now sixteen. for Kelly. Neely will be open, but he still has the one pin for his third ball. Phil for Kelly though. She's at 39. And our second spare in a row. And a tough chop on the eagle wing for Neely. Forty-six. A lead change. Kelly brings Team McGinty back into a one or a two pin lead. We'll check on that as she makes her third spare in a row and she'll sit down with 67 and a ball. Neely is open with an eight. And up 54. Well, our anchor bowlers warm up. I'll show you the unofficial scores at the half. A, 5 a 166 to 162 lead for Team McGinty, who won the first and the second match. Woodside. 
And a three and one for Neely. Those have to be going at about a 20% rate, maybe 20, 22%. We don't have a full sample on them. The six and seven, I do not know, but it's a, it's a, it's a remote one. Somewhere in the single digits, I would, I would imagine. Good 10 for Rock. Ed Woodside as, is our leading bowler at the moment with 258 through two. Norm Pelletier has scores of 115 and 123 for a 238. Here's first in the second. Nine drop. Just the two pin remains. Oh, what a pick. He had to shave it. He was bringing the ball over. He shaved it. The ball used the pin and the, and the felled pin and the wood. Matching spares for Pontier. Uh, yeah, at, the, at, the, at the half, I love <laughs> Uh, one piece of pizza would be great. Yep. Yes. Thank you, Amy Duvay. All right. Yes, Mr. Ceremonies. Seven in the fill for Eddie Woodside Norm. Coming up, he crossed six off of a flush head pin. Nice looking wood, though. Woodside will be open in the third. Lead is now six pins. Team McGinty. What a shot! Nice shot Pelletier with a masterpiece. Picks up two and a bonus ball. Two spares in a row for Pelletier. He's at 35 and a ball. Trailing by four pins. And he, we have a lead change. His team Merrill now is up three. Side is open. Pelletier frustrated with his leave after that great first shot. Looking at the four, five, and seven. Takes the nine. Drops one off that lead. The lead you see up there is unofficial. Team Merrill up by two in the third string. They, Team McGinty, our first place Sunday Pro League squad, one, man, one games one and two. Nine drop for Pelletier. Oh! He touch it! He tap it! The wood came off the wall and just tipped the six pin. Matching spares to close. 61 in a ball for Pelletier. 655 in a ball. For Woodside. We have a two pin lead. It's Mike McGinty. Throws his first one off the head pin, but leaves a, leaves a little one four. Wood to help. Merrill in the half whistle. It's gone. McGinty. Oh, what a pickup! The half whistle, which goes 18% of the time for a pro, which is a bit of a long shot, and Merrill shows you how it's done. Matching spares for our anchor bowlers here. In the third and final frame, nine. Oh, sorry, Head, I said nine. I was right. <laughs> the 
five pin drop slate for McGinty. It is a nine drop. On that exchange against the spread eagle, he picks up. Five pins. Lead is now three for Team McGinty. Another tough, tough pair of leads off the head pin. Merrill with his second straight spread eagle. Spread eagles are almost impossible to make. Our, early, our best estimate is they go 1% of the time. And look at that, he did it! He did it! A one percenter for Chris, Chris Merrill with the spread eagle, no wood. There you go. That is a definite highlight. Crossed his pins over, and then he had, he had the the two and the fell in close succession there. That three pin lead still stands, but it will be uh, as McGinty was open. With this fill, here it is. And it's seven, so the lead switches. Four pins in favor of Team Merrill now, unofficially. Both bowlers will be open in the fourth. Check on in a moment. McGinty in the fifth. It's a Kaleri. Merrill. Look at that. He had punched out the half Worcester plus the five game. Just shy of converting that one. Good 10 there, he picks up another one. So that's a 56 for Mike McGinty and a 61 for Chris Merrill. Great bowling. He matches Norm Pelletier's. Well, the bowlers switch sides. Last, last two, 61. For Chris Merrill and Norm Pelletier, 55 for both Mike McGinty and Eddie Woodside. There you see the score. The lead is now up to eight. For Team Merrill, Matt. Now our back to our first bowler, Andy Bailey. She'll go up against Alicia Kelly's absence. We're going to leave you to watch Alicia Cali Bowl for just a minute. Take a break for station identification. Nice ball.
Welcome back to the second half of the third match between Team Merrill and Team McGinty. Team McGinty trying to hold on to first place in their battle with uh, Team Daly. They won games one and two, but Team Merrill now has the lead. through her first eight. Great ball. Second spare for Andy Bailey. He spared in the seventh. She's trying to match a 102 score posted by the uh, by Alicia Kelly in absence. Gets a little mix on that. It's a four fill. 87 through nine. Bailey with scores of 94 and 85 today. As this one, the four and two. She'll be open in the tenth. Nice job picking up a 90, a 10 for a 97 for Bailey. See our scores right now and up to the minute. that lead to 10. Drops six on an unfortunate out outcome for his head pin. Bowling for Team McGinty. Sarah Duffy bowling for Team McGinty. For Team Merrill. Correction on that one. That'll be a seven for Sarah Duffy. Third ball coming up for St. Cyr. Takes eight. Two split with parallel pins. St. Cyr. Waiting for the bowlers to switch sides on his left. So Craig Holbrook. 
Move it over. Justin Scally there. And now it's St. Sears turn. First ball in the seventh coming up. Crossover. Leaves a right triangle. That's the 3 9 10. Great bid. Great bid from Duffy. She needed, needed to get action off of that wood. Fell just behind it. Two nice bids, but both bowlers will be open in the seventh. Duffy at 79 now. Wait. Team Merrill with an eight pin lead here. Fair opportunity coming up for St. Cyr on lane five now. There it is, the spare is good. St. Cyr looking to close. The eight pin lead from Team Merrill. Eight drop for Duffy. And there's a head pin and a seven drop. Little seven, eight, and five. Five pin in the middle. And just as the as the lead dropped down to one pin, Sarah Duffy makes her spare. Third third mark of this match. Great bid, but St. Cyr will be open. Third ball in the ninth. That'll be a nine, so he's at 91. Lead is now two. Plus this ball. There it is. Still falling. Nine drop for Duffy. Brings the lead up to 11. A huge fill for Sarah Duffy. Her fourth mark. She's now at 117 and a ball as Aaron St. Cyr matches with his spare. He's at 101. Six for Duffy. She takes a 123. And St. Cyr with a 109. That's a, that'll give us an eight pin lead unofficially. On the official score? I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you can. Is it eight, eight pins? Thank you. It has been confirmed.
10 for Maddie Kelly. She picks up one. We're going to start bringing you the, the lead in live action, which is now seven pins. On our graphic. A huge spare opportunity now. There it is, Russ Neely with his second here in the third. And great shot. Everything goes but the seven for Kelly. She finished the first half with a 70, with 75. Three spares in a row to complete it. That brings the lead now back to eight. And eight more there is going to bring it up to 16. Neely finds the hole between the wood and the half Worcester. Oh, Kelly will be open in the eighth. Kelly knock, lops one off of that lead. 15 pins now for Team Merrill. Third bowler in the final half. Neely wearing his Stars and Stripes jersey. Wants to see some action up in Maine soon. There it is! His third spare, his second of the back half. Bundle of five. That one is a 33 percenter, and you can see why. You hit it just right, and that sleeper is really challenging. So Kelly will take a nine. That puts the lead back at 16. With Neely in the bonus. Gets a good mixing ball. Six on the fill, so our lead is now 22. More horses, there, oh my goodness. She couldn't have placed it any more perfectly. Neely takes a 10. Pair of 10s, the lead is still 22. We'll check on that in just a moment. That was a 123 for Kelly and a 116 for Neely, who was able to pick up some ground in that back half. Kelly with a 75 half. I see a, all right, we're gonna check on our lead in just a moment. 14. Pelletier is wild, right? Great clear on the left side for Woodside. He hit it hard, a little flush. Drops nine. The lead now has been confirmed. It is 14 pins for Team Merrill. That is a nine. Big break there for Team Merrill as we have uh, Eddie Woodside. Is able to pick up one, but will not be in the bonus. Norm 
Jason Pelletier. First ball in the seventh. He's at 70. Oh, it's a strike. Big spare when he needed it, Pelletier, trying to hold on to that lead. He had been in the bonus in the fifth, and that was a, so his fill of one gets added to that score. So a 14 pin lead now. And nine in the bonus. Huge ball from Pelletier. Spare. Pelletier is fifth of the game, and look at that. Look at that. Both bowlers put up 20 boxes in this. In the seventh. Spares in the eighth. And now on the fill. Good pin action it, off a missed head pin. No blood there. A pair of sevens. Got to like Woodside's leave a little. He's got the wing with a piece of friendly wood. Pelletier's going to have to spin some magic here. Almost. Almost. Woodside is off his object though, so still a 14 pin difference unofficially. One more there. 15, right? Five? Open to start the tenth. It's four. We just did the math. We have it. The lead is now been officially confirmed. It's four pins by a team captain. And Pelletier will be open. Second ball for Woodside. He found the object there, but uh, punched it through. He's got a four, five, six staring at him with the seven and ten in the corner. And that's a six, so two more makes it a six pin lead. And officially, Pelletier finishes with a 124, a 125 for Eddie Woodside. Something. I'm right. We're gonna go with our six-pin lead. Mike McGinty now on the head pin. Merrill does a great job. What a pickup on the half Worcester variant. Bear for Merrill, oh, yeah. and a match. The lead now six unofficially for Team Merrill. Eight in the bonus there. For the moment, it's 14. A 
strike on a spare. And Merrill keeps up with the marks. Four marks in the first four here in the back. We have three boxes to go. Team Merrill with a six pin lead. another two off the lead. McGinty is now clawed within two pins. And Merrill keeping pace with the strike. Oh my goodness. It's going. McGinty, he picks up two more, then we have a tie match unofficially. Five pin lead now. Unofficially, it's a five pin lead for McGinty after that strike on the spare. He's in the bonus as well. Merrill needs, and he will looking at a three and one. Again, he's still in the bonus. There it is with that seven. That, will, that should clinch it. We're gonna wait for the official tally in just a moment. Mike McGinty with a spare, strike, spare, and strike in frame six through nine. Puts up a 141 to, to grab the lead and the sweep from Team Merrill. Sunday morning action here. That was match three. We're going to wait for the official tally. As the captains are, are looking at the scorebook, I believe that was a 600 with the last ball. Unofficially, a 600 in the, in the third string, in the third string for your team. Let's see, though. Mike, 600 even. 600 even with that last pin. Chris Merrill's checking. I had him down as a 589, an 11-pin victory, with the but with the uh, eight-nothing sweep, they have moved ahead of Team Daly. Let's see Chris checking over his scorecard below you. Those scores have been confirmed. The final score in, in Game Three: Team McGinty 600, Team Merrill 589. They win the total as well, and they, and they are able to get the sweep. I'm Bob Lee. We're going to take a break right now, but I want to say thanks for listening, and I will see you on the lane.